what is going on kid family thanks for tuning in into the channel and if you are new here please consider subscribing down below ring that bell anyway guys quick video today I'm gonna tell you guys Dang, this guy's crazy on today's video I'm gonna tell you the real cost of ownership of a 8th gen Civic more specifically the R18 8th gen Civic so the non SI non hybrid models I've had this car in my family since 2007 we bought it brand new currently it is 2018 almost about to hit 2019 the vehicle has almost 78,000 miles so not too much miles on this model we average about you know eight to ten thousand miles a year now this car is a 2007 again LX Civic it was pretty much right under the right above the base the base models the DX those weren't really even sold over here in the area Chicago area because they didn't really have power windows I, I think air conditioning was an option on those so due to sales probably weren't selling weren't popular they didn't even stock the DX so we got the LX you know just your basic grocery getter uh, hubcaps drum brakes in the back very fuel efficient four-cylinder with the five-speed automatic transmission so I'm gonna get I'm gonna tell you the truth guys of having owned this car for how much has it been man I'm really bad at math um, 7 to 10 11 just about 12 years now it's coming up in a f so we've had this car just about 12 years I'm gonna break it down to you guys how much money I've actually put into this car and what were my biggest expenses all right so let's get started for the most part this car has been a blessing it's been very reliable aside from standard oil changes which I run full synthetic I change the oil about 4,000 miles every time which turns out to be just around twice a year transmission fluid is the automatic I I'm very diligent about doing the transmission drain and refills using the original Honda ATF Z1 transmission fluid which now is the DW Z1 I believe which is full synthetic drain refill about every 20 to 30,000 miles and now you guys know doing a drain and refill isn't going to replace all the transmission fluid that's why I stay consistent doing it about every 20 to 30,000 miles just so as a whole we got cleaner fluid that's lubricating it's keeping everything cool in there because I definitely don't want to have any transmission problems in the future so transmission flush is easier than the oil change there's no filters that you need to change essentially just drain it fill it up with three quarts or so and you're good to go how much does it cost the transmission oil change pretty much costs similar to a full synthetic oil change we're talking about three quarts of oil around eight dollars we're talking about thirty to forty dollars on the fluid itself i personally bought a 12 pack off amazon so which lowered my cost average down and i've been using that fluid to change that transmission now I did replace the spark plugs on this car when it had 30,000 miles, but that was just by choice. I upgraded the spark plugs. Actually, I don't think I upgraded them. I just, uh, I think these are Iridium factory and I think I just got a different brand of Iridium. Now, I don't know why I did that, but there was nothing wrong with the original spark plugs. I just was young and dumb and I just wanted different spark plugs. So I can add that as an expense, but in reality, there was nothing wrong that I needed to change it spark plugs now air filter obviously that's that's regular maintenance cabin air filter that's regular maintenance I do run regular gas in this vehicle now it is tuned for 87 the owner's manual recommends 87 the tuning like I said the manufacturer made sure the air fuel ratios the spark timing all runs consistent based on the 87 octane 
plus or minus whatever your octane might be depending on the location depending on if they're using ethanol and the gas or not regardless it burns cleaner it is more efficient so people if you're using 93 octane for a car that is requiring 87 and it's just a factory car with no modifications you guys are wasting money and actually your car might be running worse because there's unburned gasoline as a byproduct so not only you're paying more at the pump you're not creating an efficient burn and that might lead to deposits in the engine or somewhere alongside that if you guys see my other videos i've ran a ton of suspension setups on this car and different wheels i was big into the fitment scene so i was swapping between oem wheels aftermarket wheels dialing it in with coilovers or other spring shock setups okay now the car took some abuse from that okay lowering it is obviously not the best thing you change the center of gravity you put more stress on suspension components and just so it happens my front sway bar endlings decided to go bad then later my rear sway bar endlings decided to go bad and then again my front sway bar endlings went bad so i've replaced as far as suspension components that were going bad from factory it's just sway bar endlings that i had to mess with and those things are very cheap about 20 25 bucks for the front same thing for the back so if we calculate that we got about uh 50 we got about 75 dollars worth of uh, sway bar endlings i did also replace the front tie rod ends because the boots on them broke that was another $25 so we got let's just average a hundred dollars worth of suspension components right now um, aside from the suspension I have not done anything else um, we did replace the battery once I think the original one lasted me about six or seven years which is not bad those batteries are the small ones uh, a, I think r51 batteries and you know they don't hold they're they're small they're not gonna you're not gonna get eight to ten years out of them i highly doubt it but it did good so i'm on my second battery um what else can i think of that went bad in this car brake pads yes i did replace the front brake pads with wagner quiet stop ceramic brake pads um i guess after about 40 or 50 thousand miles my brake life my brake pad life was going downhill so i mean again another wear item the rotors are still the factory rotors at seventy-eight thousand miles but as you guys seen i did unbox brand new nakamoto uh, slotted and drilled brakes that we will be installing because these rotors right here uh, are warped a little bit because when i am braking heavily the steering wheel does vibrate so those will need replacing i'm not sure if i'm going to replace the the brakes this season before winter hits or i'll just keep it till next season essentially i still have some brake life left on the pads so it wouldn't make sense for me to swap them out early what else what else we got to say uh what else do we have to replace i do have a sound system wired into this car one day i was out drifting you know having some fun in the rain pulling the e-brake trying to get a little slide in and my rear subwoofer just pretty much moved inside the trunk i didn't have it really uh secured in there and after that both my front speakers stopped working i don't know what happened if it was a short circuit somewhere but they weren't working i did have extended warranty on the vehicle which is crazy guys i paid like about eighteen hundred dollars for an extended warranty for this car i took it to the dealership i told them my front speakers aren't working and I thought they're just gonna replace it no questions asked you know they told me they're gonna charge me a hundred dollar diagnosis cost just to make sure it is the speakers and if it is specifically those speakers then they'll see if the warranty covers it which it probably would but not on, on top of paying so much money for the extended warranty now you want me to pay diagnosis costs and fees I said no thank you I went to Radio Shack at that time. I think these stores are closed now, but we went to Radio Shack. We got some alligator clips. We we installed some old speakers we had from my Ford ZX2, which actually sound better than this, these cheap Honda speakers. And that was a quick fix for about $5.
but then again that was on my part I think it had to do with some wiring issues that's the reason those speakers blew um, the only real problem that I've had with this car um, was the fuel gauge has been inverting on me I'm not sure if it's a connection issue from the back I've I've taken the dash part apart if you guys are interested I do have a video in my channel on how I showed how you can take off the whole dash from the car and some people say those wires are loose and need to be soldered in so the fuel gauge doesn't invert but that is that is very uh, it's an eyesore I hate looking at it when it happens sometimes I have to smack the dashboard in order for it to revert back to normal um, but it's something that doesn't really affect anything. It's just a visual eyesore. The one thing that I did have some problems with is check engine lights. I received a few check engine lights. Most of them were oxygen sensor bank two that it's running rich. The car is running rich. Now, most of the time, these cars, any car, it, run, it runs lean. This one is running rich. So I'm not sure what's the reason for that. I looked online it could be a few things either it's not the spark is not strong enough it's not burning enough the comb the spark process is not that effective and there's still some residual gasoline I'm not sure if it's because I have a do-it-yourself intake on here which still uses the whole factory air box it's just I took off the resonator from that air box maybe it's getting but it, if that was the intake, I'd be getting more airflow in there. So I don't think it should be running rich. But it happens about once a year. My check engine light will go on. We'll take off the battery later on. We'll clear the code and it's good to go for another six to ten months. Essentially, I might have to end up changing that O2 sensor. But it's really not a big deal. My miles per gallon is still great. I'm averaging about 25. So it's not a big concern at this moment. But... I got it in the back of my head that we might need a oxygen sensor so aside from those two things the cars have been running great we had no car accidents with this vehicle all the paintwork is still original fairly good condition and the interior looks pretty good the steering wheel is really shitty I'm not gonna lie it's like a foam material it's not even real it's not even leather so over time I think when I was approaching 20 to 30 thousand miles it was just wearing out it was peeling off like a sponge so i did put on this uh leather leather wrapped steering wheel cover it was just a temporary cover but although it doesn't fit the best it doesn't look the best i really like how this one feels we might do a leather stitched steering wheel cover in the future but right now that's the least of my worries the car still functions great and is very reliable never left me stranded for the most part and one thing I did forget to mention are the headlights on this vehicle just like any plastic housing headlight and especially if you leave your car outside without a garage the sun exposure is pretty much going to destroy the plastic housing of the headlights as it did on mine so we did the wires uh, we did a headlight cleansing procedure on it you know a few few bucks for those products and then what we ended up doing uh, most recently which I made a video on that is uh, we sanded it down we clear coated it we, we polished it up and now the headlights look a lot better I didn't purchase new headlights if someone would want to it'll be probably an additional hundred dollars into the total bill but we managed to make it look pretty dang good for a very low cost probably about twenty dollars for spray paint and sandpaper um, the best thing about this Civic is the engine and transmission shift very smoothly. You could be redlining this car all day and it's got just, just a smooth, silky tone and feel to it. Okay, I see, I've driven some other cars where you rev it past three or 4,000 RPMs and it's just vibrating in the cabin. You could tell that engine doesn't have the same build quality as the Honda with the clearances and the spec. So, great car so far, guys. Um, overall if I do the calculations let me whip out my phone essentially how much I really spent on repairs not from I'm not gonna count the maintenance oil changes transmission air filters I'm just gonna cut um, the sway bar end links you got 25 times 3 plus uh, front tie rod ends I mean essentially with things I had to replace we're talking we're talking about a hundred bucks 
and I'm, I'm, I might be forgetting quite a few things here, but let's just say between 100 to 500 dollars over 12 years. That is absolutely nothing on repairs. That means I barely had to add any money on into this vehicle. Now, as you guys know, cars are very depreciating items especially if it's just a regular car if it's not an exotic it's it's just gonna depreciate as soon as it comes off the dealer so the fact that i got this car hondas are still fairly good with keeping their value on top of keeping their value i only added chunk change for repairs it's been very reliable so good job honda and uh definitely if your kids ever want to get a first car or anything like that you can't go wrong with the Honda a Civic easy to work on low maintenance uh, reliable cost-effective good on gas and what this car has allowed me to do essentially is because of the low maintenance cost the low cost of the car itself it allowed me to save a bunch of my money and I am in a better place now with my finances and as far as opportunities for the future or investing so it was a good step i'm really glad i got this car as a first car because overall i'm in a better situation now so kid family thank you for watching if you stayed to the end i know i've been ranting for quite a bit but it is what it is and enjoy the new outro peace i ain't here for the money i ain't here for the fame though it might be nice to own a jet plane i'ma do it all for you come along